let's continue on with the blackjack game that we started to create. So if we just have a short recap, what we did last time is we created a create deck function that starts off with an empty deck and it gives us back a completely shuffled deck. Um, and how does it do that? Well, we define some face values. So we define the four face values in a list and, and then we loop through four times because we have four different suits. And for each loop, we've added all the numbers to our deck and we've also added all the face values and we do that four times and we kind of discarded the suits we just just added in the the actual cards um but we didn't really care about what suit they were because that's not really important to us at the very end we called the shuffle function that's contained in the random library and we just shuffled the deck and then we returned the deck and so this function um creates for us a completely shuffled deck that's full um, and we just save that in the card deck. So if you run this one more time, we see we just get back this really nicely shuffled deck. Um, we can't really identify the suits because we didn't put in any identification here for the suits, but that's okay. We don't we don't really need the suits anyway. So yeah. Um, so now we've learned how to create this deck, and we have enough, have that in our arsenal. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a player class, so a player that's gonna be able to play this game. Um, and since we maybe want to create maybe we want to create more players, we're just gonna we're gonna make it a class so that we can keep repeating it uh, and and so on and so forth. And it's gonna have uh, lots of functions and properties and and whatnot. So let's just start off. We're gonna create this class player. So we're gonna use the keyword class. Um, and now we're gonna put in the name. So the class name is gonna be player. And we have our colon here <clears throat> to indicate that we're gonna start the class definition. And the basic thing that we do uh, when we define classes is we first have to define an initializer. So we start off with the def, and then we go underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, just like this, open and close parentheses. So this is kind of our, our, our initializer definition with our colon here. We're going to be adding the input variables in here later. Let's just start off with the self because we're inside of the class, but everything else let's just add later after we really define what kind of features we want to have. So what kind of attributes do we want the player to have? Well, the player needs to have a hand. So we're going to go self.hand. And this is going to be one of those attributes that we need to have. And we'll also think about the data types in a second. So first we want a hand. Um, the player also needs to have a score. So it's going to have a self.score. Um, and so this is going to be the score of, of their hand. And that's also going to have the value. And well, that's really all we need right now. We can add some money. Um, so self dot money, self dot money. And, and so this is going to be their, their starting money that they're going to play with or their starting capital or whatever you'd like to call it. So these are kind of the three basic things that we need. We need a hand, we need a score and we need money. So this is, this, these are going to be the three basic attributes that our player going to have, and we can expand on this later too. But yeah, let's just start off with this. So we'll, we'll start off and we're going to put in the input variables now. So our hand is going to be our hand. Um, our score is going to be score and our money is going to be money. And maybe let's, let's just not capitalize this to have everything consistent so we don't get confused. And so our self dot hand is going to be equal to the hand that we put in or that we give it, um, our score is going to be equal to, well, actually we don't need to put in a score yet here. So um, we, can, we can set this to zero first because our score is gonna be based on our hand and we're gonna make a function inside of the player that's gonna calculate our score for us. Um, and our starting money is just gonna be equal to the money that we put in here. So we actually took out the score from the initializer and just set it as a constant value um, because our score is going to get kind of um, recomputed every time we give it, uh, every time we update the hand and stuff. Um, and so just to kind of allow basic values or to allow initialization without putting anything inside, we're also going to give these standard values. So in case nothing's put in, we're going to say the hand is going to be equal to an empty list and the money is just going to be equal to 100. Um, so this, this is if, if the hand isn't defined or if the money isn't defined, these are the standard values that they're going to take it on. So these are the defaults. 
Um, the reason that we're going to be using a list is because then we can nicely store the elements and we can go through them one by one um, and just compute the score of each of them. So we can have kind of a mapping and we can score, score store each of the elements in this list and then we can go through each of the elements one by one and for each element we can calculate a score and we can add that on to our total score. So this is the initializer function. Now, maybe something else that'd be really important for us or definitely also for the player would be to be able to see their hand and their score um, every, every round or something or every time it's updated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna overwrite the print function for the player so that we can just continuously print player. And every time we print, pri print player, we'll see the hand and we'll also see the score. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define and then we're gonna overwrite the underscore underscore str method. So we're gonna overwrite the str. So we go into underscore underscore str underscore underscore. Um, and then we open and close parentheses. Inside here, we again have to play, uh, put in the self. Um, and then we're just gonna put our colon here. So um, if you don't really remember what this does, what this does is it allows us to call print on player and we're just going to define on the next line here what's going to happen or what it's going to return if we call print on player. So what we want to return is we want to return the hand um, as well as the score. So maybe before we return something, let's just let's, let's make a variable, a temporary variable, and we'll call this current hand and this is gonna be equal to an empty string right now. Um, and yeah, so what we're gonna to try to do is rather than returning our hand as a list, we're gonna to try to make it a little bit prettier and we're gonna actually return all of the elements in our hand. So we're gonna return each element in the list um, so that we don't see a list like this when it comes up, but that we actually just, just see um, the hand that we have. So to do that, to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, we're gonna make a for loop through our hand. So for card, that's gonna be the name of our temporary variable. So for card in our self.hand, we're gonna do the following. So what we're doing here is we created um, a variable called current hand, which is empty right now. And for example, if our self.hand looks like this, so we've got an ace and maybe a 10 or something. What we want our current hand to look like is gonna be something like this. So what we want the current hand to be is something like um, a and 10. That's all we want. So just that we get rid of this, this list stuff here and that we just kind of print out what we have. So what we're gonna do is since we're looping through the hand element by element, and since we're going to make sure that the elements in our hand are going to be strings, what we can do is we can take our current hand and to it, we can just add the card. Now, if we're not sure if the card is going to be an integer or a string, we can also just put the str around it just in case. So this is going to kind of save us from running into some potential problems in case maybe in our deck we put in integers instead of strings or something like that. So worst case, we're gonna convert it to a string here and we're gonna add that to our current hand. Um, and also what we're gonna add to the current hand is going to be a kind of space like this. So this is just gonna give us this formatting that we want. We're gonna get our card here that we're gonna put in space and then we're gonna get this card here. And then actually we're gonna get a space after that. But that's okay because we can use that in a second. Um, and so what we, maybe just create our final value that we want to return. So the final status is what we're going to call this variable. And so this is going to be the final status that we're going to return. And it's going to have the hand of the player. And it's also going to have the player's score. So the final status is going to be equal to, and we're going to have our current hand. So what we're doing is we've created this final status variable inside of it. First, we're going to see the hand. And then what else we're gonna to add to it is plus 
and then we're going to add score like this and just put a colon here and a space for some formatting and then we're also going to add the string version of our self.score so that's all we're doing here um, let me just make this a little bit bigger so that we can see oh, good thing I did that because there's a typo here um, so what does our final status look like our final status takes our current hand which looks something like this and it adds to it score so it's going to look like for example the current hand is going to be a and 10 and to this and then there's another space here to this it's going to add score and then a colon and then it's going to add another space and in this case the score is going to be 21. so this is what's going to what's what the final status is going to look like um, and in case we have more values here for example let's say we have a 2 then our score is going to be 23 so that's how it's going to look like um, for more values and then if we put in more values here so like a 4 like that then this will be equal to 27 so just just kind of like that or actually well if we reconvert our ace this would be equal to 16 so ideally 17 ideally that's what we're going to get um, so since the ace can be either a 1 or an 11 we're going to use that best to our advantage so if we have a hand like this this is where we're going to get to and all we want to do is we want to return the final status like this so that's just going to print out this and so what that allows us to do is if we call print on player what we're going to see is we're going to see this here without the without this this pound this is just for comments but we're going to see this if we call the print on player and so this is just a nice handy method that easily lets us see where we're at right now um, how are things looking and we can print that out to the player so that they also know where they're at so yeah we've initialized our player um, we've also been able to print the current status what else do we need well we actually need the get score function so we need to be able to get our score um, so we're going to do def and then we'll call it well, actually let's call it a set score because that's that really is what it's doing it's it's recalculating the score um and so how are we going to do that so what we're doing here is we're defining a method um, or a function or well, it's a method because it's inside of a class called set score and every time we call this it's going to recalculate the score um of our current hand so how is it going to do that well we are going to have to somehow go through our hand and each value we're going to have to um we're going to have to convert into the appropriate score so how could we do that well if we have numbers it's it's quite easy all we have to do is convert the string to an integer so that's no problem but if we have um and um, a face value for example like an a we need to somehow convert that to the appropriate score so how are we going to do that well something that we need to do is we're going to need to loop over um, all of our list and yeah we're going to need to create this mapping so a good approach for example and um, of course there are many different approaches um, would be to create a dictionary so yeah let's just create a dictionary um, and since we only need to create a dictionary for the face cards because we can convert we can convert our um, integer or our numbers here are uh, two integers um, we only need to create a dictionary for the face cards so we can call it face cards dict that's going to be our face cards dictionary and what we're going to have inside so it's going to be equal to and we're going to open and close parentheses what we're going to have inside here is we're going to have the face card values and we're going to have the core or the face card keys rather so how they look like and we're going to have their corresponding score so for example for ace we're going to have 11 <clears throat> um for for the jack we're going to have uh, a 10 um, also for the queen we're gonna have a 10 
um, and for the king, we're going to have a 10. So this is one of those ways that we can do that mapping. And now you may also see already that maybe we don't need this because they're the jack, the queen, and the king all have the same value. So all we have to do is if we encounter one of these, we just have to convert it into a 10. And our ace is actually a 1 or 11, and we're not really taking care of that. So let's just, but this is kind of the first thing that we thought of. So let's just roll with this for right now. Um, but we can still change that later to make it a little bit more efficient um, or yeah, well efficient or, or working better or or maybe just a different version. So what are we going to do to calculate our score? Um, well, what we need to do is we need to loop through our self.hand. So for each card in self.hand, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert the card into a score and we're going to need to um, add that score to our self.score. So how would we do that? Well, first maybe let's check if, um, if our card is an integer. So if we have a value 2 through 10. So if and how are we going to check now if our, if our card is an integer? Well, so our card is going to look like this. Um, it's going to be, maybe if we have a 10, it's going to look like this. Um, so what we're going to need to do is somehow we're going to need to try to convert this to an integer. Um, and then if it is an integer, then we can add it. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we can do is um, we can try to cast this to an integer. So if the integer version of the card, so we want a lowercase i here for integer, if the integer version of the card, um, and then maybe what we can do is we can check if it's in range from 2 to 11. So if we convert this card to an integer, and it's going to be in range of 2 to 11, and now we may run into some problems here later, but this is just kind of, we'll fix these all later. So we're probably going to get some errors when we when we run into the aces and the jacks and the queens and the kings and stuff. But to start off with, maybe this is just what we're going to go with. Let's write this down, and then let's try to find a better fix for it. So if the integer version of our card is in range from 2 to 10, what we can do is we can take our self.score and to it, we can just add the integer version of our card, no problem. So all that we're doing right now is if the integer version of our card is between 2 and 10 or is in the range from 2 to 10, up to and including 10, so less than 11, we're just going to add the integer value of that card to our score. Um, if it isn't else, then what we may want to do, or what we can do is an elif, so else if, and then if our card is in our face cards dictionary, then what we can do is we can add the corresponding value to our score. So self.score plus equals, and then we go into our face cards dictionary, and here we access the key that we're getting, and the key in this case is the card. So for example, if we have an, if we have an ace here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna see is A in our face cards dictionary, it is, it's right here. Um, and then what, it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna access this A in the face cards dictionary, and this is gonna give us the value, which is gonna be 11. Um, and if it is 11, then we're going to add that to our score. And so it'll work the same for Jack, Queen, and King. Um, and so this is kind of the simple way of, of going about it. So this is just going to give us a score in the end. Uh, we don't really need to return anything or, or such because we're just kind of changing our, our score internally. Um, an issue that we are definitely going to run into is going to be that our ints 
uh, version of the card. So if we check for an ace, for example, it's going to complain. So for example, we can just do a little test here using our, um, our literal interpreter. So if we say, for example, um, x is equal to a, and if we just rewrite this if statement here, so if int of x in range from 2 to 11, so let's make this a little bit bigger, um, then what we're going to do, let's just, let's just print out int of x. So if, if this is the case, then um, we're going to print out int of x. Now, if we run this, we see, well, oh, we're already getting an error. So our a is not going to be able to get converted into an integer. So we're definitely going to need to fix that somehow. Um, maybe the quick fix that we can do right now is we can just add all of these values to the dictionary and we're going to get rid of this dictionary later. Um, most probably because it's not going to be, it's not that, it's not that nice. Um, it's kind of messy. So maybe let's just continue this dictionary on the new line, which we can do because we added a comma here. So our two is just going to give us a value of two and our three is going to up. Our three is going to give us a value of three. Our four is going to give us a value of four. <clears throat> our five is going to give us a value of five. Six is going to give us a value of six. And let's just continue on a new line so that we don't kind of go off here. Seven is going to be seven. Eight is going to be eight. Nine is going to be nine. And our 10 is going to be 10. So what we've done now is we've created a dictionary for pretty much all of the cards. Um, we haven't taken care of the ace being a 1 or 11, um, but we've taken care of everything else. So we can actually already just take this away. Um, and well, we actually don't need this, this start statement either here. So what we can do here is if card is in face cards.dictionary, well, it is. Um, so even this we can actually take away. And all we're left with is with our dictionary right now, all we're left with is that our self.score needs to be added to, uh, or our, um, our current score is going to be added to the self.score. So we're going to go through it one by one and we're going to check um, our, our corresponding score and we're just going to need to add that to the score. Um, so now we need to somehow keep track of these aces. Um, so we need to be able to keep track of when we have an ace and if we go over then we want to be able to change the value of the ace. So what we can do maybe um, a neat little solution is that we can make an ace counter. So we can have our ace counter and the ace counter is going to be it's going to start at zero and it's just going to count how many times we have aces. Um, and then we're going to check in the end if our score is bigger than 21. Um, and if it is, then we're going to change the value of our ace. So what we can do here, for example, is after we add it, um, after we add it to our score, so after we've added the ace to our score, what we can check, for example, is if our self.score is greater than 21, so if we kind of bust, um, and then we can make another check, and our um, um, and our ace counter is not equal to zero, what we can do is we can kind of subtract 10 from here. So what are we doing in essence? Um, well, we're gonna, well, let's maybe let's just finish this um, self dot score. And then from here, we're going to subtract 10. And let's okay, let's go through this and understand what we're doing. So we've created a little dictionary um, that gives us the values of our cards here. And um, we've defined all the, the face values, we've also defined all the number values. And we just kind of go through each card in our hand. And we add the corresponding score um, that we see here in the dictionary to our score. Um, and then what happens is we also have an ace counter. So if our score is greater than 21 and our ace counter is not equal to zero, so if we bust, if we have more than 21, 
but we have an ace, we can actually change the value of our ace from an 11 to a 1. So we can subtract 10 off of our score. Um, and so all we have to do now is just kind of keep track when we have an ace. So we can make another if statement, and preferably before, in case our last card is an ace, and then we bust. So if our card is equal to an A, so if our card is an ace, then our ace counter, what are we going to do to it? Well, we've encountered an ace, so we need to increase the ace counter by 1. So to it, we're going to add 1, so we're going to increment it by 1. Um, and so that's what we're doing. If our score is bigger than 21, and ace counter is not equal to 0, um, then we take 10 off our score, but only if our ace counter is not equal to 0. So how do we kind of compensate for overcounting the aces? So if we, for example, get an ace, um, and then we get, oh, let's say we get a 7, and then we get another 7, which gives us 25 in our calculation, but then we see that our self.score is greater than 25, so we take 10 off, so we have 15. Um, and then if we draw another 7, then our ace counter is still not going to be equal to 0, and our score is going to be greater than 21 again. So 15 plus 7 is going to be 22, so we're going to take another 10 off. But that's not good, because we only have one ace. So what we're going to need to do also is we're going to need to take one off of our ace counter, so that we don't reuse the aces that we have to kind of just give us whatever score we like. So this is one of the versions that we could maybe use to implement to check for aces. Um, of course, there are many others. Um, this dictionary solution is also just something that's a little bit straightforward that's going to be easier to understand. Um, but we can also change that, and we can do it a lot more intricate. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's, what's really nice about this is that we just kind of see the example of a dictionary in action. So we have a corresponding score assigned to each um, to each card, and we go through these cards um, here in our hand, and we add each of the corresponding um, scores to our score, <clears throat> and then we check for the special condition if ace is 1. And so since we can only define one value in the dictionary, um, in case we do encounter an ace and we bust because of the ace because we add 11, we're going to kind of compensate for that, and we're going to take... 10 off. Um, but then we're also going to change our ace counter. And so this is this is how we're going to be able to set our score. Um, um, so we're going to pretty much, we're going to be using this a lot because we're going to need to use this every time we get a new hand or every time we get a new card even. We're going to need to recalculate our score. So what we can do already up here is we can change our self.score and we can change that to be equal to our self dot set score, um, and then open and close parentheses. So why can we do that? Well, we've already defined our hand, so our hand is the first thing that we put in, um, and our score here is um, is 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 what we get uh, is our our way of calculating the score. So um, all we need to do now is we just well since we're actually changing the self.score internally, um, we, we really don't have to do a lot. Um, something that we should be careful about, though, is if we start off with nothing in our hand, then our self.score is going to be, well, a little bit weird because it's not defined yet. So we haven't set an initial value here, um, and so it won't, it won't be able to we'll just pretty much start off with a random value. That's what we're going to get. So since we didn't set an initial value um, for our score and we're immediately going into calculating our score, um, that may be not so good. So maybe we can just start off with zero here and on the next line we can calculate our self.score new to be equal to self.setScore. So the reason we're doing this is first we set our score to be equal to zero and now we can kind of reset our score because now when we access our self.score and add values and stuff to it, um, this actually has a predefined number. So now this is set to zero, like we have here. Um, and if we didn't have this extra line here, then we wouldn't really know what our score is initially. So yeah, 
um, that may not be so nice. I mean, something that else that we could do technically is we could move this and we can move this here. So we can set our self got score to zero initially here. Um, and that kind of takes care of that problem because, uh, oops. So something that we forgot too is we need to put the self in there in our parentheses here. So that's very important um, or else we're gonna run into issues because we're inside of a class. So we need to be able to reference self. Um, but what we're doing here now, so now if we set our score and we go into the set score, the first thing that we do is we set our initial score to zero because we haven't calculated our score yet. And then we're gonna go through all of our cards and we're gonna add the appropriate amount to our cards. So each time we kind of reset the score and calculate the score new, which, which works pretty well, um, especially if we recalculate the score each time. So if we don't reset our score in the beginning and we just continue adding, um, then if we set our score twice in a round or something and we haven't reset our score, we're just gonna recount all the cards we had before. So what do I mean? If we call our set score once, and we have, for example, a three and a four, like this, and if we then draw, let's say we draw a 10, so then we have a three, a four, and a 10, and if we call our set score the first time, we get seven. Um, so let's just write this out. So if we call our set score the first time, we get seven, and then if we call it again, we get seven plus 17 and so we technically get a score of 24 but our score is actually 17 so we need to make sure that we don't just add on to the score previously so every time we recalculate the whole score we're just going to reset it in the beginning um and so that's to make sure that we don't add on to our previous calculation of our score of course there are different ways to do this you don't have to recalculate the score every time you could just start you could for example put in here an index and start at that index to calculate the score and then you wouldn't have to reset it this is just one of the ways that you can do it there are there are different ways um this was just very user friendly and it it really lets us see the um, um the use of the dictionary too so that we're we're kind of seeing the use of of lists and dictionaries a lot and hopefully we're getting a little bit more acquainted with them and being able to see a little bit better when we can apply them um and when we can't and when when they're you know nice um when should we apply them what are they good for so let's just create a test instance of our player um and then we can continue moving on to adding more features to a player in the next tutorial so let's just create a player first though so what we're going to do is we're going to create a player one oh, player one and this is going to be equal to our player and we're just gonna put this in manually right now. We're not gonna access our deck yet or anything. Um, so let's just give them the cards um, one, or well, there is no one. Let's give them the cards three and seven like this. So this is gonna be their hand. And we're actually not gonna put in a money. So we're gonna see the default value of money being set. And then let's print our player and Let's see what we get. And hopefully we get the three and the seven and the 10 for our score. So let's see, oh, um, printing our player. What did we do wrong here? We returned the final status. Um, ah, where you have to print our player one. So we wanna print player one. We don't wanna print the general player class, but we wanna print our player one. So if you run this again, we see we get, oh, we get three and a seven and our score is equal to none. So why is our score equal to none? Um, let's see. Maybe after here we can print our self.score. Um, and let's see what we get here. So if we run this again now, ah, we see, well, our self.score is set equal to none first. Um, and then, so that's why we're getting none here. So maybe if we try to also just print out our self.score here to see what happens here. So print out our self.score. Maybe we did something wrong here. So here we see we get a zero. So we're going in here. Uh, we're setting our self.score. Um, so our self.score here is equal to zero. Um, ah, we should probably also return 
is what we should do. We need to return out our self.score. So we actually need to give something back at the very end. So that's why we can set this here. Um, so since we're setting our self.score to be equal to the whatever we get in here in the set score, um, we actually need to return our self.score. So we need to kind of pass this back and this value that we pass back is gonna be what this is gonna be equal to. So if we run this now, we see, well, we get the zero when we print our self.score here, we get the 10 when we, when we set it here, and now we get what we're looking for, we're getting the three and the seven, and this gives us a score of 10. Maybe if we add one more value, let's say a five, and we run it again. Ah, so now we get the score of 15. So everything that we're doing here is just kind of hard coded, but this is just for testing. We see that um, our player runs, the set score runs, um, at least for now. Maybe we wanna change it later too, um, but basically everything runs. We've seen also a little bit of debugging. So this print statement is extremely useful for debugging um, and it can quickly tell us where an error is. So in this case, the problem was that we didn't return anything. Um, and since we're just uh, having a local variable here, so we're not, if we set our self.score here, we're just setting it um, locally and we're not, well, not really, but we're not returning anything. So if we're not returning anything um, and we're setting our self.score to be equal to whatever we return from here, and if we're not returning anything, then our self.score is gonna be equal to none. No matter what we did to it inside of here, the last thing that it's gonna be equal to is whatever was returned out of here. And since we didn't return anything, um, this value kind of got reset to none. So yeah, we can see how useful these print statements are to, um, to debug. Um, so that's, that's kind of a really great quick fix method and it lets you get a nice kind of overview of your code. But yeah, so we've, we've done the simple implementation here. Our player is nowhere near complete. So we're gonna move on and um, in the next tutorial, we're gonna expand our player's functions a little bit more and be able and have them be able to do more, more things like draw cards and, and such. Thank you.